السلام علیکم دس از ڈاکٹر تنویر احمد لیکچر ان انسٹیٹیوٹ آف بزنس اسٹڈیز گوہاٹی یونیورسٹی آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی دی سبجیکٹ دیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی ان دس ویڈیو از فائنینشیل مینجمنٹ دس از آر لیکچر اینڈ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ بانڈ ویلویشن دس از دی چیپٹر آف بانڈ ویلویشن سو لیٹس ڈسکس دی کانٹینٹس فسٹ وی نیڈ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ واٹ از بانڈ what is its role uh, what are different types of bonds and then in future lectures we would study <coughs> how do we evaluate a bond uh, how do we find the intrinsic value of a bond and then there are uh, different methods of valuation for different types of bonds say we have zero coupon bond and then we have coupon bond and we need to see how we are going to evaluate we are going to find the intrinsic value of these two types of bonds but that is for the late, late lectures so let's start with the definition of bond uh, what is bond uh, a bond is a financial instrument uh, sold by a corporation or government um, to finance their projects right and uh, they promise a future payments on those financial instruments so before we move forward let's discuss the basic ideas we have used a term financial instrument what do we mean by financial instrument it is uh, more important that we start with the basic ideas now financial instrument is nothing but an agreement between two parties so in bond the agreement is what the agreement is that the bond holder would uh, give some future uh, would would give uh, would lend money to the company now who is bond holder the one who is purchasing the bond and who is bond seller it is the government or corporation right so uh, so what is the agreement here between the bond seller and the bond holder the bond seller has agreed that he would make a future payment that can be of interest or after maturity time it would repay the principal amount and the bond holder the one who have bought the bond from the government or corporation have made an agreement that he would lend some money to the bond seller so it is a so financial instrument is nothing but an agreement and this bond is a financial instrument uh, so in this case the bond seller is corporation or it can be government and there are different types that we are going to discuss in next slides and why they are selling this bond why the government or corporation is selling this bond because they need to raise funds to buy some assets or you know to Uh, to buy say inventory to government need to uh, develop some projects uh, a corporation might want to install a new factory for that they need funds they, to buy the assets uh, remember to buy assets we either get funds uh, from the owner or from the um, liability side from the owner's equity or from the liability side so this bond is the liability side when the company sells the bond it is generating a liability so there are a few terminologies that we need to understand four of them basically uh, that would uh, we would be using frequently in coming uh, lectures first one is the coupon now what is coupon uh, let's discuss an example so we have an example of uh, this bond that is uh, this is a hypothetical example agro fertilizer sold a bond of rupees 1000 that would pay an interest of say rupees 100 per uh, year uh, for 3 years and after 3 years this bond would mature and the company would uh, repay this principal amount to the uh, bond holder now uh, first terminology that we are going to understand is the coupon so this 100 rupees 
is the coupon remember it is the interest amount not the interest rate it is the interest amount that is being paid to the bond holder so the interest amount is called coupon then we have this uh, terminology uh, which is coupon rate coupon rate is basically the interest rate this was the interest amount and this one is the interest rate so interest rate would be called coupon rate and the interest amount would be called coupon then we had maturity maturity is the when the bond would expire and the bond seller would repay the whole amount to the bond holder so in this case this bond would expire in three years and the engro fertilizer would repay its liability right it would repay the amount that it had borrowed from the um, bond holder last one is the this principal amount and this principal amount is called uh, the face value the par value or the principal amount here the concept of face value might get a little tricky but to let me give you a definition of face value it is the value that had been written on the bond that is written on the bond so any value that is written on the bond would be called the face value right that's why we, it is written on the face of the bond that's why we call it that's why it gets its name the face value <laughs> so that amount would be repaid uh, the amount that is written on the bond would be repaid to the borrower at the time of expiration of the bond let me give you an example another example let's say there is a bond uh, that had been uh, uh, its face value is 5000 it pays an interest of say uh, say 20 percent right and that bond would expire in in two years so in this example the coupon amount would be what it is not mentioned here but we know the interest rate is 20 percent so 20 percent of 5000 would be what so in this case if we calculate the coupon it would be 20 percent remember uh, if we need to eliminate remove the percentage sign then we divide the number by 100 and dividing this 20 by 100 we get 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 into the principal amount would give us rupees 1000 this 1000 is the interest amount which we are going to call the coupon <coughs> this is the coupon rate this is the principal amount and this is the time to maturity let's get back to our slides so we have covered these uh, four terminologies <coughs> moving on to the type of bonds uh, first we, we are going to discuss government bond and within government bond there is a bond which is called treasury bond it is also called t-bills t-bill is a bond that is issued by federal government and more specifically it is issued by the central bank of a, of a country in pakistan our central bank is state bank of pakistan sbp so uh, sbp issues this bond uh, uh, to finance the budget deficit their yield is always uh, yield let's call it the interest rate is always lowest so why is it lowest because it is a risk-free bond now what do you mean by risk-free bond and when you um, when you study the other aspects of corporate finance you would come to uh, you know uh, come, have uh, you should have familiarity with this uh, concept risk-free bond now basically when state bank of a country a central bank of a country issues a bond uh, the central bank have the capacity they have the authority to issue as much currency notes as they can so theoretically speaking the central bank the chances of default the chances that the central bank would not be able to repay the principal amount or the interest amount is zero so that means that 
they would always honor the agreement they would always repay the interest and the principal amount so from there so, th so that means the, the bonds issued by State Bank of Pakistan or Government of Pakistan are theoretically risk-free bond. They have minimum ri minimal risk, but we call it a risk-free bond. And therefore, because the risk is lower, the return would be low. Therefore, their interest rate is the lowest. <clears throat> they are short-term bond. Uh, and we will discuss this zero coupon bond in a uh, couple of slides. Uh, they are sold at discount to the face value I, i'll give you an idea of this uh, in a minute uh, they they expires they mature in less than a year <clears throat> and they are optioned by state of bank of pakistan on fortnightly basis uh, let's move back to our uh, document <clears throat> so what do we mean by discount Remember, um, in our daily routine, in our daily life, what do we mean by discount? Anything that is being sold at uh, at a price lower than uh, it should be sold at. So, uh, simply put, it is uh, if if a thing is being sold at a lower price, then we call it a uh, at uh, being sold at a discount. So, if when will we call a bond being sold at discount value so if its face value is thousand what do we mean by this face value that when this bond would expire in three years the company would pay us would repay us would would give us back the thousand rupees but let's say today when we are buying this bond agro fertilizer says that they would sell us this bond at 800 rupees so the price of bond is 1000 that is the price tag on the bond that is the amount written on the bond but the angro fertilizer is selling that bond at 800 rupees so what are they doing they are selling that bond at a discount so we call it a discount bond if they were selling it at say 1200 rupees then we would call it a premium bond but that terminology normally doesn't come uh, into you know textbooks uh, normally we would see the terminology of uh, discount bond <clears throat> so going back uh, sold at a discount to face value so when it is being sold at a uh, value less than its face value <clears throat> then it is called a discount bond so we have understood this normally the treasury bond is a discount bond <clears throat> moving on treasury bond is not just the bond that is uh, sold by government of pakistan there is another bond pakistan investment bond and these are just an examples to give you an idea uh, there are tons of bonds that are sold by different government <clears throat> so Pakistan investment bond is a long term bond uh, it pays interest semi annually what do we mean by semi annually the interest is paid every six months and it, its maturity is up to 10 years but more than one year right so the maximum it can go is 10 years so we mean uh, we know that it is a long term bond <clears throat> And some of the other bonds that, that uh, are sold by government of Pakistan are Ijara Sakuk, National Saving Bond. One of the bonds that you have heard um, a lot is called price. So before we understand price bond, let me go back. Yeah, remember we discussed this terminology discount bond. It is also called coupon, uh, zero coupon bond. Now on discount bond or zero coupon bond, there is no interest amount. There is no periodic this hundred rupees. So you would say, why would someone buy the bond? The idea is that they would buy it at eight hundred rupees, and after say three years or whatever the maturity time is, they would sell it at face value, which is higher than the amount that they have bought it. So they buy less and they sell high. So the discount bond are sold at lower price 
and when they mature they get a higher price so the investor earns this 200 rupees it is not an interest per se but it is the profit of the uh, the bond holder we call it a zero coupon bond why is that so because there is no coupon right there is no periodic interest payment so that's why we call it zero coupon bond then there is another bond which is called coupon bond and you have guessed it rightly <coughs> it pays coupon so if say for example angro fertilizer was selling a bond uh, its face value was 1000 the company was not selling it at discount it was selling it at its face value and they were paying say rupees 100 each year as interest amount so that means they are paying coupon so it is a coupon bond so the earning comes from a bond in it can can be in two ways either you buy less sell higher then it will call it a zero coupon bond or discount bond or you buy it at the same price and the company gives you this same amount but you get an interest amount this is the normally uh, the situation that you are familiar with now here comes our um, price bond Price bond is neither a coupon bond nor a zero coupon bond. There is no interest and there is no discount. So, for example, a bond of 40,000 rupees. Now they have discontinued it, but let's discuss uh, as an example. Uh, the, the State Bank of Pakistan would sell it for 40,000 rupees. If you purchase it and then resell it, you would have to sell it at 40,000 rupees and so that is not for discount it is not as a discount bond and you don't get any interest amount on this bond so then why would someone buy these bonds and you are familiar with uh, with these scenarios right more than me people buy these these bonds these price bonds because of their prices they get some lucky draws and um, they earn, you know, they, they, they uh, through these lucky draws. So moving forward, um, this is an example of uh, schedule of different bond being made. They are, um, they are auctions, right, of price bond. Just an example. And let me give you another example. You know, people sometimes uh, ask. Uh, uh, how would a bond look like so just to give you an idea this is a, this is a bond of uh, 200 rupees so uh, it is just a certificate right so moving on then we have a municipal bond municipal bonds are those bonds that are not issued by federal government rather they are issued by some uh, organization of the or institution of the government or a provincial government for example let's say wabda wants to build a a power plant and for that they need some uh, investment they need money they need finances and if wabda issues a bond that bond is not issued by a federal government but an institution of a government so that bond would be called a municipal bond or let's say a Peshawar Development Authority or Rawal Pindi Development Authority they want to construct some housing society and for that they need finances and for that they issue a bond then that bond again would be an example of municipal bond Moving forward, the last one is a corporate bond and uh, corporate bonds uh, are those bonds that are issued by corporations. So this is the example that we are used to uh, uh, discuss. 
Um, so corporate bonds are issued by uh, companies or financing vehicle with relatively strong balance sheets. They carry rating of triple B by Standard and Poor and Moody's. In Pakistan, this is normally known as term finance certificate. So corporate the bonds that are issued by corporations are normally uh, uh, in Pakistan they are called term finance certificates TFC. So when you when you hear the word of TFC, you uh, immediately realize that it is a corporate bond now uh, standard and poor and moody's these are just two agencies that rate the bond of a corporation uh, right so so these are agencies and we will discuss the, more about this in our coming lecture